I am Jim Callison and live from the Gallup Studios here in Omaha, Nebraska. This is Gallup's Called the Coach, recorded on May 7th, 2018. Call the Coach is a resource for those who want to help others discover and use their strengths. We have Gallup experts and independent strengths coaches share tactics, insights, and strategies to help coaches maximize the talent of individuals, teams, and organizations around the world. If you do have questions during this live webcast, we do have a chat room. It's right down there, right below the main video window for you. Love to have you log in. Bottom left-hand corner is the login button. Choose that. Choose the guest account. Don't create a new one. Just choose guest. Put your name in where it says guest. Take those numbers out uh, as well. Hit submit. And you'll be in the chat room. You can ask us questions live. This will be one you'll want to join us and ask those questions. So if you're in the chat room, you'll have an advantage. Jessica's got some great answers, so you'll want to ask us questions. If you have, if you do have questions after we're done doing this, maybe you're catching the recorded version of it, you can send us an email, coaching at gallup.com, or there's a contact form right there on the live page. Don't forget to visit the Gallup Strength Center, just gallupstrengthcenter.com for all your Clifton Strengths coaching and resources and needs. And in this case, head out to the new builder site. Head out to gallup.com forward slash builder. That, that will get you to the new site. Lots of resource, resources for you available there, including some new videos that we'll be putting out here in the next couple of weeks. And if you want to catch uh, all of our coaching work, head out to our coaching site, coaching.gallup.com. One more thing. Don't forget, if you're if you're listening to us on the Apple Podcast app, rate, review, and subscribe. Great way to get that automatically. If you're on YouTube, there's a subscribe button and put hit the notification bell there. That way you get notified every time we go live. And if you're on Spreaker, uh, follow us. That way you get notified when we put out these webcasts. Jessica Kennedy is our guest today. Jessica is an associate publisher here at Gallup. Jessica, great to have you on Call to Coach and welcome. Thanks, Jim. I'm really excited to be here today. Yeah, no, excited to have you on. Uh, associate publisher, I think is what we call you. Why don't we get to know you a little bit? Some of those folks listening already know you, but what you do for Gallup and give us your top five. Sure. Um, so as the associate publisher, uh, a lot of people think I get to write the books. Unfortunately, no. As much as that would be so cool. Yeah, you don't want total, people writing books. Let's no. just <laughs> total, total Gallup's nerd here. Um, but my role is to help with marketing, business development, um, product development, and then um, also like some relationship management. So we have a lot of partners that we work with to help get our books into the hands of leaders and um, organizations really around the globe, which is a, a pretty cool um, calling to have. Okay, top five. So number one, individualization. Number two, maximizer. Number three, strategic, relator, and woo. I knew there was a woo in there somewhere. Yeah, we, Jim, we woo at each other. Let's face Re it. Relator <laughs> woo? That's a pretty awesome combo, right? It is an awesome combo. So I've got like a really big, close group of friends. And um, I get kind of schizophrenic at big events because I don't know if I want to work the room or I want to hide in the corner. So it sort of depends on like how much woo I'd been or I like my comfort with the group. But um, yeah, it, it, it is an interesting combination to say the least. Yeah, no, it's not schizophrenia. It's power. It's your superpower. It's you can do super both. Power. <laughs> you can do both. Speaking of it. doing both, we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about our book launch. Um, then we're going to talk about your other role here in licensing. So if you yeah. come to watch this video, uh, make it all the way through at the end, we're going to talk about some licensing and getting your product licensed here at Gallup. But so hang tight on that. But Jessica, we are super excited because today is May 7th. Tomorrow, May 8th, Born to Build. Here, put that put that book back up okay. so people can see it. Tomorrow's the book launch of Born to Build. Jessica, why don't you talk a little bit? We've, we've spent a bunch of time recently talking about this. We've made a bunch of videos. Again, if you go to gallup.com slash builder, you can see the videos. Hopefully, by the time you're listening to this, we'll have mm -hmm. those out there on the book. But let's talk about, you know, uh, why did we write this book? Like, what's the importance of it? You know, it's really interesting. Um, like this this weekend, there were some um, unemployment numbers that came out. And we kind of take the stance that those unemployment numbers maybe aren't a great, accurate um, representation of what's really happening in the economy. And, and there's a lot of different statistics people can argue. But what the reality is, is that we know that the jobs that are being created are not as good as the jobs that we used to have, right? We're a lot more hourly. And I, I was just talking to someone over the weekend um, that had lost a job due to some health issues, was trying to get back in. It was really hard to find one where, um, you know, it was full time, a good salary, you know, good culture, good benefits, you know, those jobs aren't there. And what we're seeing is that, um, 
you know, in the past, we used to have more jobs being created than we were losing out at the economy, right? Because there's always going to be some sort of sloughing off, sloughing off of jobs. Um, right now, we've got kind of a stasis. So as jobs are coming in and jobs are going out, it's about the same, but they're also not the same type of jobs. And so we really are facing this question of like, how do we help the economy grow? So we've got kind of that macroeconomic, but also the a real microeconomic piece, an individual piece of like, how do we help people live their best lives? You know, which is a big question with for us at Gallup. You know, how do we help organizations create great cultures that allow people to live um, through their talents and have great experiences. And so um, we have been working in the area of entrepreneurial um, science for quite some time. And it, it was time to really redefine this idea of what entrepreneurship means. And what we where we went with it was this idea of building. So think about that. If we could shift the conversation from what do you do, right? Because that's one of the first things we ask everybody, especially us wooers and, and even people who don't have woo, it's a play, comfortable place to go. So tell me what you do to what are you building? Think about how that dynamic starts to change the energy around work, around our lives, around who we are. And so um, this book really helps people understand how to answer that question. Who are they? You know, entrepreneurial um, entrepreneurship, entrepreneurs, it's kind of a limiting term. Like if I ask, I mean, Jim, you and I have talked a lot about this because you and I are both kind of entrepreneurs at, at heart. You know, we've kind of nerded out on the things we do in our own lives. But a lot of people would go, well, and this is kind of my response too, like, I'm not comfortable like putting my mortgage at risk or I, you know, like I really love my company or, um, you know, I just don't know. I, you know, I like to create, create things, but I don't, I don't know that I have the idea to do that. And so um, if people don't see themselves as entrepreneurs, how do things get created? So if we shift that language and we go broader than entrepreneur, broader than innovator, right? To people who know how to create economic or create activity by building, by growing, almost all of us have within us that desire to create, you know, that call, whether it's growing a family, growing something in their community, social entrepreneurism, entrepreneurs entrepreneurism is a big thing right now. I know, sorry. <laughs> this is no, why I didn't actually go into broadcasting. No, um, no. You know, it's funny that you struggle with that word because we found it's a, it, especially in English, it's a hard word to say. I'm all for it. We moved to Builder and some people really struggled with that. When we made that move, yeah. you know, some people, it's just easier to say, let's just be honest. So yeah, and spell. I, you can, <laughs> yes. So you can say Builder for the rest of the time. Yeah, and we're going to shift to that. Yeah, so, you know, Entrepreneurs, um, you know, they create, innovators develop, but builders take ideas and builders take innovation and then they make it something. So whether that's um, starting a plant church or a program at your child's school or a division within a company or growing a team or starting a brand new company, it's just got a much bigger tent feel to it. You know, a, a lot more people go, Oh, I see that. And when I when I've talked to my friends, when I talk to people in the community, you know, granted, it's it's you know, I'm in Omaha, and so a lot of people are familiar with Gallup. But when I start to talk about this, you see that flicker of recognition. You feel you see that almost internal look that they start to have and go, "Oh yeah, I've got that too." Right. Whereas if I had talked about, you know, are you an entrepreneur? Most people are like, "Yeah, you know, that's not me." But but when but when you ask about building. It, it does change the conversation. It's really dynamic. I mean, people get kind of excited and they start to go, oh yeah. And maybe they're not building now, but they've built in the past or they've got a dream that they want to build, whatever it is. And so what I, I think this book is really critical for changing how we look at what happens in our in our communities and in our country and, and really globally. I mean, entrepreneurship is not, a, it, it's not an, entre an American ideal. I mean, I think this is a concept that goes broad. Jessica. Yep. Yeah, Jessica, we started with the uh, Entrepreneurial Strengths Finder. We then, yep. right, that was the very first version of this. We internally moved that to what we call the Entrepreneurial Profile 10 and yep. now Builder Profile 10. This is the book to complement that. Yes. When I'm, if I'm thinking about using, buying, deploying this resource that we have available now, give me some areas where you think it's going to be most successful. We've had some tremendous pre-orders for it. Yeah. By the way, talk about maybe how folks can get it on pre-order today or even in the future where they'd go to get it. But where are we targeting that and, and who, who and why would they need to go out and pick up this resource? Yeah, I'm going to do the easy one first. So don't forget. So you gave the web address at the beginning. I'm going to make it even easier. Born to build book.com. So um, if you go out there, you can pre-order today from Amazon. 
Um, or like if you're in an organization or you are a coach that wants this, we also have a link on that page to BookPal, which is one of our partners that does bulk book sales and they do a great job. And so um, the more books you buy, you get a little bit more of a discount. So um, those would be the two places. So born to build book.com. Pretty easy to remember. Good marketing, right? Yeah, I know, right? So, yeah, how do you use this? I mean, I think this is this is a great question, and it's something that we are continuing to to think about and evolve too. Um, you know, the book was actually written with thinking about higher education. Um, you know, so this is a book that could be used in a classroom setting, which I think translates really well to this community, which is um, we've got a lot of educators and and I think coaching by nature, your educators. Um, the reason for that is we know that as early as you can get kids, young people thinking about their builder talents and how they might be able to use it, we've got a really great opportunity to create a, a long-term economic force. So there's a really cool program, just I mean, just a quick side note, that's happening in Lincoln, Nebraska, which is just down the road, where um, their, um, the city's uh, kind of innovation group, where they, they go out and raise money for cool projects that help advance the community. It's called Prosper Lincoln. Um, they actually raise the funds within the community to have every high school, or not just public school, but parochial schools as well, go through Born to Build. And we'll talk a little bit more about this, and, and Sagita and Todd probably talked about it too, is that we've got um, the three, you guys have the three types of builders or the three roles of builders. Well, there's also that idea of an alpha. So somebody who has all of those roles within them. So they were able to identify these students that were alphas and invite them to an in-depth um, program with their parents. So they got to learn more about themselves and building and how this all works with the idea that now they get to go out and they get to build. And I bet these kids are involved in JA and I bet they're involved in DECA. And, you know, so now we've got other programs that we've got these great relationships with where they can go out and start to create this economic activity through their building. So um, I think higher ed is, and, and, and actually K-12 is really an exciting place for it, right? So kids that are at this time where they're thinking about what do I do and who am I? Um, they start to understand their builder, builder talents and what that might mean. And I think this it's also really exciting whether you agree with what they're doing or not, there's a lot of um, a lot of activity. This this next generation that's in college and high school right now, like they're looking at themselves differently than maybe the millennials and even Gen X did. You know, they are creators. Um, they're starting movements, and so um, I think that this is a great book to put in their hands. I think that the other really natural place is in with organizations, right? So bigger organizations, large organizations, they get kind of um, you know, in a rut and they kind of do things the way they've always done them. But we know that you've got to break that up, right? Disruption was the hot word about five years ago. Well, it might not be the buzz term anymore, but it is the reality. You know, if you are a nerd, an input nerd like I am, so input in the top 10, you know that with the advancements that are coming in technology, we're going to face some really big disruptions in organizations. When you think about like self-driving cars and what that means to delivery and what it means to taxis, all that jazz. Things are going to be changing in people's companies. So wouldn't it be great to start empowering employees and start to create a builder culture where employees can understand their, their builder profile and then help them create within their organizations, right? Think about that. Um, what could start to happen? Now, companies got to have some shifts, right? Like you've got to be comfortable with some failure. You've got to be question comfortable with questions. But I think an organization that figures out how to create that builder culture is the organization that really starts to succeed and grow organically, right? Most growth we see anymore is through company acquisition, right? Mergers and, and acquisitions are hard on companies and they might do numbers, but they're not great for people and they don't usually have sustained growth. It's just by amassing and pushing things together. Um, that's called fusion and it's really unstable, right? So let's let's figure out how do we help companies start to grow organically? This is a great way to start to do that. I think, you know, I think too, like coaches, this is really great as you start to coach individuals who are going through times of transition or want to figure out how to grow their 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 career and and their dreams. Um, I think it's a real natural for entrepreneurs. We have some really great, interesting conversations with um, ex, uh, accelerators and incubators. We're going to go out um, next month. Sangeet is going to go talk to the NASDAQ Entrepreneurial Center in um, um, San Francisco that works a lot with Silicon Valley. So we've got some really interesting um, conversations that are starting to happen there as well. 
Jessica, let's talk a little bit about the resources available for new coaches. Maybe they've the very first time they've seen this, they haven't done the journey with us. Yeah. Uh, talk a little bit about the assessment and then talk about some of the resources also coming with the book. Yeah. So the assessment, I mean, if you've been with around in and in and around Gallup, you're going to be pretty familiar with the Clifton Strength Finder, obviously. Um, this is a, an assessment like that. Um, instead of 34, we've got 10 builder strengths. They're going to help people understand what comes out. I think in the report, there's the top four. Um, then we're going to help people identify what their role is. And I know that um, Sankey and Todd are going to be talking about this going forward um, on Call to Coach, but um, there's three primary roles. And this is going to make sense when you start to think about it. So entrepreneur is like a singular thing. We think of one person, but the reality is, is you need a lot of different types of people. So you have that rainmaker who's your vision person, your sales, you know, they're out there. Um, you need to have a conductor. So this is your operations person, right? The person who can figure out how to build systems and processes to get your solution right? So this is all about a customer problem and a solution you're delivering, how to get that out the door. And then you've got your subject matter expert. So this is the person that really knows how to do it, whether it's the arch architect or the engineer or the creative or the doctor, right? The scientist, they are the people that know how to do the, the thing that is that you're, you're offering, you know, the solution that you're offering. And then some of us are multiple of those, right? So um, when I took the assessment, I was matched as an entrepreneur. So I have those three roles within me. Some of them, I'm, I'm probably a little bit more conductor and expert, um, but I also am a salesperson. So it's, I think it'll be fun for people to start to understand that. And I think as a coach, like I, I salivate as a coach thinking about like helping people start to look into that and help them understand that it's okay that you're one or not the other. And then think about how do you find those other people? And the book is going to provide that guideline. So if you're a coach um, and you're coming new to this, you don't have to figure out how to build a practice around this. The book guides you through it. So there's exercises. Um, we've got PDFs that'll be on the website once you go through the assessment that you can access that will help you lead your um, coachee through this process of learning about their building talents and then oh. how to build. Those 10 builder talents that you're talking mm -hmm. about, we have created videos for you. Micah and I created in the style of a theme Thursday. We've created those. Yeah. Builder Talent Tuesday is what we called it. And so if you're interested in going out, those videos are available for, for you for free if you want to see each one of those mm -hmm. talents. So go to just Google or go to YouTube and search for Builder Talent Tuesday. You'll find those pretty, pretty easy out there. There's also eight resources that are available, eight PDF resources available for anyone who's taken the assessment, has a login. They can then uh, view those reports online. I'm sorry, view those resources online, download them, the writable PDFs. Those are the latest call to coach uh, programs that I've been doing with Sangita. She's been on with Todd. We've been talking through those forms. So if you want some instructions on what our intentions were and how those were to be used, we have all those resources available for you um, as well. There's a series we've done a called the coach born to build. I think if you just put that in, uh, if you go to our coach's blog now, well, not yet, because we haven't posted them all yet, but They're we'll coming. have those, we'll have those available for you as well. If you want to hear from uh, from Dr. Bottle. She will walk you through each of those forms. I don't know if you, Jessica, I'm not sure you can get much closer to the book than the no. author herself, right? And she's so passionate about it. She's so, I, that, she, that is just on a personal note, it's been a super fun treat is working with, um, Sangina, Dr. Bottle about, uh, on the, on the book, but she's, she, she loves this. You know, she's so excited to see it really start to take off and, yeah. and change lives. David had asked in the, in the chat room, if you took the assessment a few years ago, will you have to take it again? I think there was a cutoff point in time, there right? Is, like, I don't remember I exactly, David. It's a great question. 2015, I think, is the date. Yeah, because and, I, 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 David, I'm in that case. I took it when ESF came out in 2013, I right. think. I think I was so, early 14. Yeah, and yeah. so I don't, I don't get the new report either. So I, I, I keep telling myself I'm going to take it again. <laughs> To get no, the I report. need to, I actually, I, Jessica, I need to as well. It was one of those things like, you know, we, we did some question changes. There were some updates to it. Yeah. It's probably for me, if you are, if you have the old report, you took it a while ago, it's probably worth taking it again. Just yeah. jumping out there, do it again. You know, with strengths finder, we recommend you just take that once in this yeah. case. And you know, I, I think it might be worth to jump out there again yeah. and get the new report. You might know more about yourself uh, when you go out and do that. What else, anything else when we think about the book and a book launch in the resources we, we covered, anything else you'd like to talk about as we think about Born to Build and this impending launch on, uh, on, on May 8th? Tomorrow, yeah. I, um, tomorrow. I, I think that, you know, I it's a great question. And as a, um, you know, obviously I work for Gallup, so I'm really excited about it. 
I wish I had had this content. Um, I had a really cool opportunity. Willie Teeson, um, who founded Godfathers, uh, his testimonial is on borntobuildbook.com, so you can go see this. But um, I had watched a video that he and Todd had done. They were out in Colorado doing a web uh, webinar, and they were talking. And I, I had not heard Willie's story before, and I was just enamored with it. Uh, my, my family had always gone to Godfathers when I was younger. And um, anyway, he was in our, our building one day, and, and Todd called me over to introduce. And introduce me. And, and what both he and I, like where we kind of bonded was this idea that wouldn't it have been great to know this about yourself a long time ago? You know, like where, how different, I mean, he, and he's been incredibly successful and he still thinks it would have benefited him to know this about himself earlier on. Um, I, I just, I think this book has the power that Clifton Strengths has for people's lives and for people's organizations. Um, I love, I'm so passionate about um, figuring out how we get this into higher education be, and, and into K-12, because I think, and specifically higher high school, you know, I think helping kids see this is completely game changing, right? Um, and, and it's the same thing as strengths, right? Strengths, you understand your, your the power that you have within, within you and what that means you can do in the world. Here's another thing where, I mean, it, it's all about aiming and claiming it, right? Like it's all about moving forward and creating activity. So, you know, I, I guess I, this is going to sound kind of cheesy, but I ask you to, to take the risk, you know, like jump in and try this. Um, you know, if you want to just do the code, that's always an opportunity, but the, the book has got some really powerful resources, some great stories. Um, I, I think it's a game changer for people. Uh, and, and I I know you think probably think she has to say that because she's in Gallup, she works in press, but, but I do this because this job is 100% mission for me. And it's like the best job in the world where I get to take the things I love and, and help other people have it in their lives and hope that they have the experiences that I have from it. Um, so I, I guess that's the piece. I'd say also keep your eye out. We've, we've got some really cool um, publicity that we've been working on. So um, you should see some nice buzz out in the community. Um, you know, Smart Brief is gonna run it this week. Um, Tomorrow, Thrive Global is going to put in their email. Bloomberg Radio's got us on it. So rich, rich dad, poor dad. So we've got some real, and those are just a small sampling. Those are the ones off the top of my head. So we're going to have some really nice buzz. It's going to feel good as you guys are part of the Gallup community. It's going to be really fun to see us out there and, and really hear people talking about the this thing that we're so we're so excited about. Well, it's been fun for me, Jessica, in this whole journey of, of BP10 and the, some of the work that we've done is my own job here at Gallup is a, just a true reflection, right, yeah. of the inside builder. Like, I I'm, I'd never want to go out on my own and start my own company. I have nope. no interest in that. Nope. And yet, in, here at Gallup, I've built two jobs for myself. Mm -hmm. One is what you're seeing right now, right? We did not have a webcast component to anything that we were doing and, right. and we took a bunch of risks to give it a try. And I got an opportunity to lead that initiative forward to do this. We also had, didn't have an internship program for our technology group. And so, you know, six years ago, seven years ago, I got the opportunity to start that up. So coaches, you know, don't just think this is about starting new companies. Uh, yep. Oftentimes it's about taking existing companies and adding new, you know, maybe the hardcore pivot. We've got a lot of companies that need to pivot from what yes. they're currently doing to what they need to be doing. And you may be in the right place to coach or lead or guide. You might be that person who's uniquely qualified to be able to help a company pivot on a new idea and take them to the, you know, in it lead them well into the 21st century. You know, you had said uh, a little bit earlier about some of these, you know, the Ubers and the right. Many of them are just pivots of existing ideas that, uh, that, yeah. that existed. And uh, in our gig economy, it's getting mm -hmm. more and more important that we're able to provide those. And even in different areas, uh, I don't have just one job at Gallup. I have a couple because mm -hmm. that's just led. It just kind of led to those things. The beauty of what the BP10 gave me is it gives me some framework to kind of talk yes. about those things that, um, you know, that these talents that I have around building that uh, help me to have that conversation. So we're excited to make this tool available. The book is available. It's going to be launching tomorrow. We'd be excited for for you, the, you the listener, to go out and pick that up. Again, we've created a lot of great resources for you. So if you're interested in doing that, there's it's hard not to get up to our stuff around it. But born to build, and uh, we've got we've got a lot going on the series. Jessica, we also want to spend some time covering your role in licensing because yes. I think that's super important. I think one, there's a lot of folks don't even realize we have uh, uh, licensing opportunities. A couple years ago, three, four years ago, um, we were seeing a lot of folks uh, just starting to use our stuff. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, and we said, you know, we probably need to think about the correct ways of getting this so people can use it, so they can license to it. So 
One, describe a little bit about that role that you have there. Yeah. And, and let's dive in on what does it mean to be licensed, to yeah. be Gallup licensed? See, I love this. This is my, my builder. I have two different roles that are new to Gallup within the last year and a half. So um, yeah, licensing uh, is relatively new. And what, what is this idea? What is licensing? So it's getting legal permission from Gallup to use, in this case, um, our, our 34 Clifton strengths. And I think we include the Strength Explorer um, a 10 as well and use them either on merchandise or in content. <clears throat> um, and that is, uh, it seems like pretty simple right now. Our coaches, I don't want everyone to panic. You get some, you get some basic um, rights to use those in your coaching that comes within your product terms of use as a certified coach. So um, that's always the, like one of the first questions when we start talking about licensing, my coach friends get nervous. It's like, no, 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 there's within the scope of what you're doing, you're, you're probably just fine. Um, where it starts to get interesting and where we want to start talking about licensing is when you want to use it in commerce, right? So if it is just a coaching dynamic, so let's say, Jim, that you're my coachee and I've created a workbook that I use with you and only with you and my other coachees, that's totally within your product terms of use. But let's say I've created this workbook and it's really awesome because, you know, let's face it, I'm great. And I want to start selling that to other coaches um, or I want to sell it to organizations that I'm I'm not having a, a classroom and by experience with, that's when you need to have a licensing agreement. And it's something that, you know, we didn't really, you know, we weren't probably as um, consistent before, you know, it was sometimes we'd say yes to people. Sometimes we'd say no, there wasn't a clear philosophy. And I really loved it. I talked to um, Lexi uh, Thompson, who's a great coach and, and she used, and this was her, her language. She's like, I love hearing about this because now the swim lanes are clear, right? Like what this licensing program starts to do is provide really clear um, understanding of what you can do and what Gallup will do and who has the rights and the responsibilities. It is a new program. Um, so one of the things I do love about working with entrepreneurs, with builders in our coaches is that there's always new questions. So <laughs> we're always we're always having to go back and, and kind of talk about, think about how do we want to make this work? But um, it's been a really great, um, great growth and development as these cool new ideas and, and um, what ifs and could we do this have come about. Specifically, let's talk about some of the examples of some folks who have gone yeah. through the process, just so people know, like, Okay, what what are some opportunities that I have? Who who are some of our licensees and what have they done? I have some I have some uh, visual aids with me. So one of the probably the, the he was the first one. Scott Mackis has um, strengths mugs, and so there would be my top five. So Scott um, is really the one that helped us get thinking about this. So there's two kinds of license licenses that we offer. The first one is merchandise. I'm going to talk about that one first. So um, you want to use our full 34 and put it on an mm -hmm. item that you would sell. Here's my friend Joni. She has strength socks. These are awesome. She has light gray ones too. Um, pretty exciting. So I have both colors, by the way. You have both colors. Love it. Yeah. I had a, one of our colleagues walked past my office because I've got a little display outside my office and she was like, where are those things and how do I find them? Um, my friend Lisa develops these. Uh, my friend Carol Ann develops. These are not going to be. These so are we have some, Jessica, we have some audio only folks. So when you say. Oh, these, well, I should. Okay. So Scott, I held up. This is great. Sorry, guys. Thank you. So yeah. Strengths Mugs is a nice white ceramic mug. It's got my top five in black. It's got a nice black inside. Um, so you won't see your coffee stains. Um, my strength swag, my socks are dark gray, and then it has all the full 34 strengths on it. And each one's written in the color that is coordinated with that domain that matches the strengths. Um, I have a journal that has, oh, I have strength socks falling off the desk. Um, I have a journal that has my top five on it. It's got some really cool chevron design and the colors that are the associated with the strengths uh, domains. And then um, my friend Carol Ann, uh, Carol Ann does some other stuff and I'll talk about her with my content license. But one of the things that she creates um, our strength decals. So they're not quite as visually exciting, but um, they're really neat decals you can put on your computer, on your window, on your door, on your fridge. And so um, she sells these neat top five um, decals. So those are merchandise licenses. I, they, these are just a sampling of their products. They, they all have a lot of stuff. Um, the second that we offer is a content license. So this is using our themes, our Clifton Strength themes in um, some sort of content. Now, when we first envisioned this, books were what we what came to mind, right? Because we've got a lot of coaches that write books and um, want or want to write books or have written books. And so um, one of the first ones that we worked with was Carol Ann McGuire, uh, and she developed a really beautiful book. Um, she's a, an, an artist and an illustrator called Heroes of Faith. 
and um, developed for each theme, um, told the story of a, a, a biblical or historical character um, and how their how that is their theme and then tells their stories and has activities. And she developed it originally um, for her, her church as a ministry project and then um, wanted to be able to sell it. It's, it's absolutely a, a beautiful book. Um, and so that's an example of how we use it in um, content. Now, this is where it's kind of, again, things innovate. We started with books on our minds, but where it went very quickly was um, starting to use it in technology. So you had Richard on last week. Hi, Richard. So Richard is one of our partners out of the UK, and um, he developed a product called Cascade. And what I love about this is that it's um, it's really friendly to use. It's an ex basically an Excel file um, with some really fancy, awesome, amazing, I don't know how you do it, Richard, programming around it. It's probably good. It's good. And this is why I love licensing, right? I don't know Soar with your strengths, it. Jessica. Soar with your Soar strengths. Soar with your strengths, right? So Richard um, has is a coach, but also has a nice um, deep background in Excel and some programming and has developed this really cool tool and wanted to be able to make it available to other coaches, right? So he, and he was our first one. So we went through the process to learn more about the, the product and figure out how we could license it, what kind of content was in there. And now he's, um, I, from what I understand, because it's self-reported, I've got his report, but he's doing really great. You know, like this is a need. And like, again, let's just weave this in, talking about Builder, there was a there was a customer need, right? Coaches needed some help thinking about how to get different types of reports with strengths or team strengths to their coachees. And Richard also kind of had that need, started to develop for him, saw that there was a market need for it and created it. And so um, worked with us to get the content license on that. And that was kind of kind of exciting and a, and a little bit of an interesting challenge, too, because he's based in the UK. So all of our merchandise partners thus far have been in the US. So we had to learn a little bit more about, um, you know, how we might do handle money and currency and all that. I mean, so there's some interesting things that start to come to play here as we're working with people in, in, in different countries. Just if guys, if I was going to write a computer program, an application or a website where that was, I was going to charge for that, would that, would that also be a license? And yeah. maybe you can talk about, we, we've got another coach doing that as well. Yeah. So we've got a, a team um, with a company that's based in Slovenia called Eda Grow. And they have developed software that um, is now under license where they use our theme names and definitions. Um, and they are, um, it's a kind of a cool little program, again, helping people with their individual piece, but also helping kind of teams see the view. Um, and so the solution, again, um, is requires a, a license, a content license. Um, and it was our first, so Richard's was an Excel file. Now we are talking about something on the internet and the web. So again, kind of a different and, and subscription. So now we're thinking it's not just a one off and buy, like how do you do handle subscriptions? So anyway, some really great business problems. Um, again, needs that are out there in the, by um, for coaches and, and organizations. And we've got these really great builders out there thinking about it. And now we have a path um, to bring them in and be part of our um, official licensed partners to be able to offer that above board. So Jessica, I'm thinking about, so I've got this product in my head yes. and maybe I'm going to create strength shoes or mm -hmm. on the bottom of them, right. Are going to be the themes. Um, how do I, what's my first step when we think about uh, with us and licensing, or if I'm going to think about a book or, you know, whatever art, uh, those kinds of things, yeah. your computer program, no, uh, it's what's the first step? Yeah. So I think, you know, the easiest thing is to find me. Um, I'm in all of the the Facebook groups. So you can, you should be able to search for Jessica Kennedy. You can always send me a note or my email is pretty easy. It's just Jessica underscore Kennedy spelled just like the president at gallop.com. Um, and then what I'm going to do, the very first thing I'm going to do, and I'm here, I'm going to, I'm going to put up a, a visual aid again, woo, is we have put together this really great program guide. Um, that helps people understand the two different types of licensing and then the aspects of it. And we can go into a little bit more detail around some of the finances around it. Um, but what we have found is that if we if we really transparently give everybody all the pieces in advance, it lets them think through it. Um, and then the next step is um, to, to have a call or a conversation. Um, there's a form that we ask people to fill out too, um, which again, based on our experience, we've asked them to start thinking about, you know, who's going to buy this? How are you going to market it? You know, what other licenses do you have? You know, just really helping people think about, do I know how to do this? Um, and it's, and it's been again, really a, a good tool to have. So we're going to start with that. And what I find is sometimes it turns out that, you know, people are just, uh, you know, they've got a, they've got a little bit whisper of an idea. 
um, one of our hashtags that we've been using for the Born to Build is, you know, stop dreaming, start building, you know. And so this is now another piece of them figuring out, okay, now how do I start dreaming and start building this? Um, and sometimes it's like, ooh, that's really maybe more than I want to go. Like maybe the numbers don't quite work. And that's okay. Like, you know what? I think I'll just use this within my own practice. You know, one of the things that I have been having, um, I've had a number of conversations about, but none have made it kind of to the licensing point yet. Not not because of us, but because they're the developers are still thinking about it. Is like the idea of an online course, right? Where I might have, um, you know, be able to deliver content but it's it gets to be a little bit challenging, right? Because you can't package Gallup's educational materials into a workbook. So how do you get those materials to people? So it just, you know, it's been some really good conversations as people are thinking through it and dreaming or people that want to write books, but haven't, you know, maybe haven't started yet. And that would be the key is talk to us before you start, because you, you want to get that permission before you've invested a lot of time, money and resources, because um, not everybody will get a license. John's asking if you'll post the link to that guide. First of all, is that available everywhere? Um, yes, I send it to you as part of this. So I'll make sure you have it. If you can, I don't know if I can try to post it on the Facebook group, one of us will get it up there. So John, yes, we, yeah, it's not a, it's not a secret. It's, we want everybody to have it in their hands. And then if it's not, a, is it available publicly or is the best way for them to get a hold of it to email? Get a hold of me. Yeah. Okay, we don't so have it out on the website. Jessica underscore Kennedy at mm -hmm. gallop.com. Yes. Um, and if you can't remember that, Jim underscore Collison at gallop.com. <laughs> sure we get it to you one way um, or another. Um, and we'll uh, we'll post it in the, uh, oh, the, the, this, this brings up a good question. Do I have to be a certified coach to be licensed? You do not. Any, you're nope. saying anybody can do it? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Well, uh, here's a, anybody can do it. I like, for example, um, one of my merchandise partners has um, worked for Gallup 20 years ago, but um, does a lot of, um, she's a, her specialty is merchant uh, advertising specialty. So she's an items person, but she has a passion for Gallup and she's been one of our partners for years. And so, um, and she's has a passion for the coaches. And so she has um, gotten involved, um, but she's very tight to us. I don't think that a lot of people who, are not certified coaches are going to be able to do this at the level that that it makes sense. You know that like like if you don't really understand at a deep level like how the strengths work and how to talk about them or um, a content license probably will never work for you. I mean, it just the reality is you just don't know enough. I mean, I, I we had somebody who just. Um, Wrote a, wrote a different book. It ended up not being a license because they only um, briefly talked about the book. So we did it more as a permission, like kind of like a, it wasn't fair use, but it wasn't a license. So we did it under a permissions. And, um, it, you know, it became real apparent real fast that she didn't, you know, like understand. It was like, so I kept having to be like, no, you can only do this. You know, like this is only what the permission is because she was trying to say to use strengths in ways we would not recommend or condone uh, using strengths. So, yeah. you know, we, we're, um, we don't, we're not an editor. We're not going to get in deep and, and um, like content edit your stuff, but we are going to make sure that it's on track and that you're, you know, we don't ever, for example, this is, you know, we run into this a few times now, but like you don't want to use strengths as a selection tool, right? Like we're, it's a developmental tool. And so, um, you know, we do get deep enough to sort of be able to follow that and, and make sure that, that um, those things aren't happening. Good. Jessica, anything else you'd add to folks? Any, any other tidbits of helpful information you give folks before we wrap it? Yeah. So I think a couple of, let me, let me do a couple of things is uh, just to emphasize again, co contact me early. It's better to, to have the conversation. Um, and I, I, uh, now that the book is launching, um, I'm going to put my full focus back on my licensing because we've had to kind of pause it for a few weeks as we're getting into that. Um, but, but have that conversation or get that, get the guide and read through it. And sometimes even just some emails are enough to get people's questions answered. Um, when in doubt, ask. Uh, again, if you're a coach, a certified coach, you should be very comfortable in understanding your product terms of use. So make sure you know what you can and can't do. If it's in the dynamic of your coaching relationships, you're probably fine in using the strengths. But if you want to sell something beyond that sort of off the shelf in commerce, then you would need a license. Jim, can I talk just briefly kind of about the, the finance piece of mm -hmm. it? You a bet. Bit? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, because a lot of people want to know. So on the merchandise side, and again, this is all laid out in the, the document, um, and, but I'm going to go pretty fast because I know we're wrapping up. Um, the There's a royalty, a licensing fee of 12% on your sales. Okay, so that's the simplest way. So every quarter you report your sales and it's 12% of those sales. So it's not your cost of goods. It's not, it's actually on the, the price of the sale. Um, for content license, oh uh, yeah, just the twelve percent, and then for a content license, there is a fifteen hundred dollar, and this is all in U.S. dollars, um, one-time fee at the beginning, 
and then it's 15%. Nope, I did that wrong. Hold on. We switched them a while ago and now all of a sudden my brain is like, yeah, then it's 15%. A content license is 15% um, every quarter on your sales. And so those are the basics there. We, we obviously would encourage you to read the licensing agreement very carefully to read. We provide a style guide to read very carefully. And then again, we've got that really clearly laid out in the welcome guide. One of the questions I get asked all the time is, so uh, my legal, how can I legally use terms and mm -hmm. all those? I want to let individuals know that we, those are fairly clearly as, as much as legalese is clear, uh, laid out. It, if you go to the gallopstrengthcenter.com and scroll all the way to the bottom, actually there's two links at the bottom, Yes. product term of use and, and, uh, and the policy. And I'll, I'll read those exact here that down there. So there's a, um, yeah, there's a use and sales and a product terms of use that are there. There's also a trademark guide that yes. is there. a lot of folks ask that all the time. And so don't hesitate. If you are having trouble sleeping at night, just download those, read through them. They're legalese, right? Yep. But those are, again, I get that question all the time and that's where everything is located. We've, we've published, it doesn't cover every exact situation in nope. that. And so there's, there's, it's just the way it is. Like we can't cover everything, but it does cover a lot. So it does. If you want to start there as well, if you got some questions on how you can and what you what you can and what you can't do with those, they're all outlined there again. A lot of good reading. And, and let me just jump in the one the question I get most from coaches, Jim, is um, about and and this is even our area in the Gallup Press, but is like, hey, you know, I really like the aim it, claim it, name it, name it, name, name it, claim it, name it, yeah, name it, claim it, you know, it. Yeah. right. Um, and I want to use that in my training materials and, and your terms of use is like, yeah, you can print that off your kit or, re or off your flash drive and you can hand it out, but you can't take that material and incorporate it into a workbook that you have that you hand out. So, um, I I'm a marketer in my background and my training. So, uh, you know, I understand that you're like, but they're different. Yeah, they are. Um, but that's, you know, that's our, our material, our copyrighted material that we've developed. You know, these are the rules we've put around it. Um, which again makes some of the like you know from a licensing standpoint it makes some of the courses difficult right if you want to use some of that content you can't put it into your own um, vehicle to to hand out so um so that, i think that's that's probably the biggest question and then we, like you said trademarks make sure that if you're using the theme names that you've got the registered um, trademark on the end of it uh one of them restorative is still a is still a trademark. Everything else is is registered with an R. So, but those are things to know. Like that just keeps you in good graces. And and I love I I just I love the passion that coaches bring to this because they want to do it right. You know, that's everyone starts with like, okay, I want to make sure I'm doing this right because I you know I want to you know like I respect this and I love that because you know we are on the we're all in this together in that regard. And I will say that um that my legal partners are fantastic. Um, we've really tried to develop a, an agreement that's pretty straightforward. You know, the legalese. I, I'm not a lawyer, um, but I can I read it and. And it makes sense to me, you know, like I think that most people who have some business experience are going to look at it. And it's going to make sense. Always have, we always recommend that you have a legal partner look at it too. Mm. That's probably the best advice yep. I think you've given all day is that um, if you're going to do, if you're going to get involved in these kinds of things anyway, probably best that you yeah. have your own legal representation that uh, you're running things yeah. by. That's and, just and a again, smart do idea. it before, you know, like we, we've had a couple people that have come to us because they're like, oh, my lawyer said I should probably make sure that I have permission from Gallup, right? So those are great. And, and again, our... Our goal is never to make you, you know, like run up legal bills. I mean, no, no one's going to look at this agreement and go like, oh my gosh, what are they trying to say here? Like we really have worked hard and it's, we've, we've changed it over time to really distill it down so that it's, it's truly clear. No, oh, that's great. It's anytime you get involved in any of these kind. this is the hardest part of business. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and it's the, not the easiest one to talk about. And it's not sometimes the easiest one to deal with. And it takes time. Uh, right. to sometimes get these all done. So be patient uh, with it. It can't always be done like a CSI episode and you get everything done in 30 minutes. Yeah. It, uh, it sometimes it takes, takes a while. Time. Yeah, it takes a while to get things done. So be patient as we work through the process. And it's not always easy. This is one of those things that's just sometimes it's just hard work. Jessica, any final thoughts? One last thought. This will be kind of fun. I know a lot of um, the watch, the viewers and listeners are going to be at Strength Summit in July. Um, we are going to have um, four of our merchandise partners represented in the Summit store. So we're going to have some merchandise um, there, which will be a lot of fun. I'll be there as well. So if you are coming into town and it makes sense for us to meet, to have a conversation, I'll be able to set up some appointments 
um, with you to um, talk about your ideas and your licensing. So I think that um, July will be an exciting time. I think the timing on this is great. And, and thanks for having me on, Jim. It's it's great to be able to bring this information. Um, again, we've been working on it. It's finally to the point where it's sort of codified. We could put it into a little welcome pack and be able to share that out with everybody. Um, but uh, looking forward to having our um, four of our partners represented um, in the Summit store. All right. Well, you have two jobs and I have two jobs and we covered two things here today. So thanks. Look at us sure. maximize. Woo! Oh, boom. It's done. <laughs> Again, uh, Jessica, congratulations on Born to Build. Thank and, you. And uh, for the whole team there, that, that takes more than uh, a small team. It's a very large very team, team to get one of those things launched. Yeah. And we're excited to have that out and available in bookstores as well as on Amazon and, and uh, BookPal and all those other resources and other sites that will be available on it. It's available May 8th. Good chance you're listening to this after that. So you can head out right now and pick that up if you want. Again, if you have quite light, uh, questions around our licensing, you can contact Jessica directly. Just Jessica underscore Kennedy at Gallup.com. You can always email me if you've got questions or you can't remember that. And I'll forward that over to Jessica. We'll remind everyone to take full advantages of all the resources we have available at the Gallup Strength Center, just gallupstrengthcenter.com. Send, send us your questions or comments. Uh, you can send those to our email address, coaching at gallup.com. You can also catch the recorded audio and video of this program as well the past ones, including the link to all our social resources. They're available on our coaches blog. Go to coaching.gallup.com. I mentioned earlier about becoming a Gallup Certified Strengths Coach. If you're interested in doing that, all a list of all of our courses that lead to that are available courses.gallup.com. There's also a tab on the Gallup Strength Center that says uh, become a coach. You can click on that. There's a lot of home. There's a bunch of information there about how to do that as well. We reference our Facebook page. If you go to facebook.com slash groups slash call to coach, just ask to be invited in. I'll let you in, in there as well. We post a lot of our resources available to that group and a big group, uh, almost 11,000 people in that group now. And uh, just a lot of great social resources available for you there as well. Look forward to the next call to coach. Thanks for joining us, everybody who came out live. And with that, we'll say goodbye, everybody.